Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. I'll be reading from You Have to Stand for Something or You'll Fall for Anything by Star Joe. <laughs> From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm the show's producer, Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. We're already laughing here because we have a very funny crew with us. Uh, the funniest show in New York right now is called Celebrity Autobiography. This is where you have a group of terrific actors who come together and read excerpts from actual celebrity autobiographies. It's at the Triad Theater in New York. I suspect it'll be probably coming to a town near you sooner or later. Uh, the creators are with us today, Eugene Pack and Dale Rafel. Thank you very much for coming on Theater Talk. Thank and you. they brought with them a couple of friends of theirs who uh, participate in Celebrity Autobiography, <laughs> two of the funniest performers in New York, Jackie Hoffman, who we've seen in Hairspray, and Xanadu, and our good friend Richard Kind, who was so brilliant in The Producers when you mm -hmm. took over from yes. Nathan. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome all. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, all right, Dale and Jean, uh, how does one sort of come up with this concept of just having actors read excerpts from celebrity autobiographies. Well, it actually started in Los Angeles years mm -hmm. ago, and I was inspired be from actually realizing that Vanna White wrote a book called Vanna Speaks, and I couldn't believe that a book existed like this, that she wrote her life story. What could be in this book? And <laughs> when I flipped through it, I thought, wait a minute, can, can anyone join me in in, in, in reading this, this is outrageous what the details that someone would go into about turning panels on the Wheel of Fortune. And I thought, this is comic genius gold material if you could just simply read it out loud. Unintentional. Unintentional, Unintentional comic just genius. Just read it as is, the, let the word speak for itself, what would happen. And I had an opportunity to bring this idea to a, a comedy showcase. Let's see if it would work. I invited some friends to pick out material, to go up and do it, and in that, that first night, the audience that was there, we had no expectations, yeah. it was all a surprise, and it just instantly worked. It, you, you thought, wait a minute, this, is, this material is unbelievable and, and so entertaining, and you don't have to do that much with it. So, so, so now, Dale, you guys have spent, what, your, the last few years of your lives just scouring <laughs> bookstores, <laughs> Amazon.com, looking for every cheesy celebrity autobiography you can find? Yeah, we, at first, we was, was New York, I mean, the uh, Los Angeles Public Library constantly going back and forth looking through everything and then the used bookstores and uh, and we I mean we had a, maybe 300 books we've read and so during that period we weren't even trying to put on a big show we were doing it very casually mostly just friends were coming and and then one day it just took off when uh, uh, 100 people showed up one day and mm -hmm. then then but yeah, you kind of, you don't really have to read the entire book to find out what's gold. <laughs> it's true, there are, there are definitely tricks, there are tricks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you, you don't have to traipse through, through, through them all. You get the tone pretty quickly, and um, but there's some books that are just, the whole book you could, you know, it's just hard to even choose. So you began with Vanna White, but very quickly, what were some of the earlier ones that you discovered that this can work in addition to Vanna White? Some well, of your favorites. What was wonderful is that people would come into the show, they'd, they'd bring suggestions, performers would come in with different ones, and we'd learn that it's important to present it in a, in a certain way and find that great passage that had hopefully a beginning, middle, and an end, mm -hmm. and would be just the right amount of time up on stage. There's, there's a definitely a craft and an art to it. It's not just people getting up there and reading whatever you can grab. It really, we, we put a lot of thought behind it to, to it's present. It's very well structured, each, each excerpt. Yeah. To, to pre yes, to, to prevent a show. To, to, to present mm -hmm. the right show is so important. Mm -hmm. to, to the audiences, but early on I found this passage from Neil Sedaka's book called Laughter in the Rain. I think we have it right which here. Which is right here. Laughter, there he is, and looking very, very, seven, very 70s. <laughs> <laughs> looking good, Neil. <laughs> the, the funny part is you wonder if, do they remember that they even wrote a book? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's my question. Oh, I, wrote, I, I did write my memoir a long yeah. 20 years ago, yeah. and, and in it there's a, there's a passage where he talks about what he, he writes about what he eats in every restaurant, what he eats for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for snacks, what he drinks, his soft drink of choice, his diet 7-Up, what he eats in an Italian restaurant in China, and it builds, and it's this, 
it's this great piece to perform mm -hmm. because it just doesn't stop and the audience... It has an arc. That's <laughs> <laughs> right, because after lunch. Um, well, well, exactly, well, exactly. It's that those snowball. details that yeah. are mind blowing to me. All Absolutely the details. Now, how did you guys get involved in it? And did you go to see it first before you agreed to do some readings for them as well? We're not like that. We, we don't just, they ask, but we say act. yes. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and when you first sort of got, heard about the concept, I mean, you guys are great, great comic actors. Uh, did you say, oh, it sounds a lot to me, or did you? Get the books yourselves and take a look and say, I can make this work. It, I, you know, just from the bizarre theater history that I have, I knew it would fly. Mm -hmm. And it's not, you know, things like this in a much less successful uh, way have been done in, in town. And I, I, I knew what it was. And, and it's just, it's just the greatest thing to just, uh, just effortlessly let people who are much more successful than you hang themselves. <laughs> like a, a joy in that. We took to it like... <laughs> but that said though, Richard, I mean, you, you, you can't like sort of wink and nudge at the audience when you're doing it. I, I mean, you know, say, hey, we know these people are idiots. Yeah, you, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. Yeah. But, but well, one thing that we learned at Second City is there are genres of comedy. Okay, I mean, you, you, you can, there's parody, you, you can do a straight Neil Simon, which has no parody at all, that's mm -hmm. really acting the character. And for some reason, with the training that you have, or as an actor, you, you, you sort of parse together what your job is in, in reading, and you say, oh, this is the tact you should take. With Vanna, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it later, but, yeah. but I, um, I, I sort of, in reading it, like after three, four times, I sort of began to feel what I could do with it. Now, I read Star Jones, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Which is believe, another excerpt that you Yes, but can you show? believe that we're mentioning Star Jones? But I read Star Jones. <laughs> and, it's a hell of and, a and I really did, yes. And I didn't have a, a handle on it. I, I read it fine, and it's funny on its You're own. Great. But I don't, I don't really have a handle on, on where <laughs> the humor Jones. is other than its funny words. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but, but sometimes I like to go up and... And the, the funny thing is, they said, well, when I was asked to do it, they just said, you know, will you do it? Well, I'm a guy who works in town who's been on TV, so they're going to ask me. But they got a list this long of people who've been on TV, and they ask, you know, would you like to do it? I was just one of the early ones, and, and I enjoyed it, and it's on Monday nights, and I'm usually not working on Mondays. <laughs> Ever. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, so I said, sure, of course I'll do it. And I get a kick out of doing it. You know, I'm an actor who likes to go on stage. This is not heavy lifting. You know, it's the book is there. And no, you, Diana you Ross, the that's the that's the, uh, yeah, that's the tone. Right, that's the tone. Right. Yeah. Um, now, I want to ask you sort of just a, t a technical question. Uh, legally, are you allowed to use these copyrighted materials in a way that some of these celebrities might find that you're mocking and ridiculing them? Here. The, the thing is, is that we're, I don't feel like we're mocking or ridiculing any, this is, it's literature and it's, I oh, see wow, them, wow. literature. <laughs> it, I, it's, it's in a, it's a it, there's genre. binding, there's <laughs> binding, it's a, and I, I see it as mo where you, you scour material to find monologues and shorts, what, what can we perform from this? The passages are very brief, we rotate material all the time. Mm -hmm. It's fair it's, use. It's, 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 yeah, it's exactly. out there. And, and I don't think we do it mean spirited, no. I don't even think the evening is mean spirited spirited, but no, it can true. be looked at that way if you decide to, but I don't believe that it is. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm sorry? There's nothing mean-spirited about it. In fact, the good news is, is that we put all this material together, we rotated, it's little snippets, mm -hmm. and people, and the bottom line is that the people in the audience have the best time. I've, I Really, I stand in the back of every show, I perform in it too, and the, the, the kick that the audience goes through, it's so much fun. If any of these authors would well, should celebrate... Laughing. You are laughing at how foolish these people are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's more of an incredulous <laughs> fascination, I right. think, from yeah, the audience. The it's not. It, it's not as much of a what a jerk that person is. It's more like I kind of can't believe it. It's just like. Well, let, let it, for instance, you do this wonderful thing because you can. You also take see. You also take out biographies and interlink yes. them, and you do this mm -hmm. wonderful thing where you've got. Elizabeth Taylor, Eddie Fisher, Debbie Reynolds, and Richard Burton told from yeah. several different it's vantage Rashomon. points. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah. And you, there is a point when you're looking at Eddie Fisher and thinking, whoa, isn't he seeing, you know, the forest? He doesn't see the forest through the trees. Right. I mean, you, you are sort of laughing with historical hindsight at, at Eddie Fisher's blindness towards... But that's what he wrote, though, yeah, which is your this, point, that this is, this is this, their know, words. You don't change their words no. No, at, no, all. No, at, at all. It's, it's all their points of view, and people... You, it's educational, too. You learn... <laughs> 
really? You learn about these incredible things in history. I know. Abby and Liz were friends since they were so little. Yes, it was a terrible betrayal. No, but then they all become friends again. It makes for such great drama and comedy on stage. Do you know? Wait, I heard that that on Entertainment Tonight. I heard that Elizabeth Taylor last year called Eddie Fisher up and just just on a lark and said, Eddie. So just like in the book. No She's got a lot of time on her hands. You know what's very nice about this? When the audience watches it together in the small space that we're in, it is a very communal feeling. And I don't want to say that they feel superior, but as a community, they go, it's especially in this world of celebrity. And, you know, when at, at 7 o'clock at night, all these idiot shows come on and just talking about, you know, who's wearing what and what did Lindsay Lohan do and what, how many times she's been. In the case of Neil Sedaka, who's eating what? Right. 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 But, but I, they can laugh at these, at the idiocy. Together, right, right. You're okay. just like us. Right. Plus, but, your audience I, I mean, gets to drink. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they do. Uh, yeah. Now we brought you guys along because uh, you both do um, uh, a couple of really brilliant, brilliant bits in the show, and uh, I think you've kindly agreed to perform a little excerpt there, Jackie, for us, uh, celebrity autobiography. Now, who, whom have you selected, and why? Oh, I have selected uh, Ivana Trump, which is always a favorite. <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find out why when I read it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the I stage is yours, my, my dear. Exciting. So I will be reading from The Best is Yet to Come by Ivana Trump. <laughs> <laughs> my recipe for raising kids. I encourage my children to try new things. As much as I tell them they can do anything, I don't want them to engage in pastimes that have no future. <laughs> the other day, Ivanka came to me and said she wanted to enroll one afternoon in field hockey. I said, Ivanka, that's a boy sport. There's no future in it for you. If Ivanka wanted to do karate, fine. Field hockey, she does not need. I think golf is the perfect sport. But fencing? I'd say, kid, don't waste your time. <laughs> Ice skating is great exercise and it's social. You won't get many phone calls inviting you to play field hockey. But ice skating you can do in New York City at the beautiful Woolman Rink in Central Park, which their father and I rebuilt during our marriage. <laughs> All my kids play yes. tennis and ski beautifully. At the age of two, I took each of them to the top of a hill and told them, ski down. <laughs> they would wail, I don't like it. Tough, honey, I'd tell them. Get to the bottom of the mountain. My kids have every pet there is except cats. Cats shed, and they're unpredictable, and they scratch. We have two dogs, fish, birds in every room, turtles, you name it. We got it. I find it so funny that children adore hamsters. They're rodents. That's what they are. A duck. Now that's a pet. I was walking on the road outside our home in Greenwich, and I found a duck that had been hurt in the head. I took it home, and the kids named it Wobbly because it wobbled around. We nursed it back to health. Wobbly lived in the bathtub, but followed us around wherever we went. Finally, we gave him to one of the men who worked on the property. He slowly taught Wobbly to be free. I hope he's all right. <laughs> For myself, I'm not really afraid of anything. I wouldn't go to Harlem at four in the morning because you're asking for trouble. <laughs> Family is everything to me. As you can probably tell, I adore my kids. I always say I'm like that American Express commercial. I never leave home without them. Ivana Trump. <laughs> very, very well done. And uh, I guess you can use that as an audition piece. Some I will, for, for my up-tempo. Yeah. <laughs> so but this is kind of the key to it, right? I mean, you, this is Jackie Hoffman. We know, you know, she can fill an 1,800-seat theater with just, you know, pulling a funny face in a mm -hmm. Broadway show, and you do it straight like this, and it's really Ivana who's getting the laughs. Right. It's so it's so simple, and again, again when you have that concentrated audience, it's just, it, it just takes off. Did you notice a, a difference between how people reacted in L.A. or in New York? Is one better a than the question. other? Good yeah. My job, Richard. It, mm. it, <laughs> I have to say that we've, we've been doing different dates, too. We just did San Francisco, yeah. Yeah. and when we did it in L.A., the, really the, res the responses across the board uproarious it really is and but of, of course there's nothing like that New York audience it's it's really hard to explain many have tried to explain it but you can't <laughs> but when and you're in New, when you're in New York or Los Angeles do you ever uh, look out there and suddenly discover that one of the people whose autobiographies you're reading that yes. night is in the audience well we're, we're, we're always prepared 
And oh, we're yeah. Yeah, how, about, how about somebody who's written the book getting up and reading their material? We feel that if somebody gets <laughs> up and reads their own book, it, it doesn't... It, doesn't really achieve what we want it to. The words don't speak for itself mm -hmm. through somebody else. Because we like to find sometimes the opposite performer of the author yeah, so yeah. that yeah. there's a juxtaposition. So we just feel like, and then I feel like the show could turn into everyone just reading from their own books, which could be another show. Right. And yeah. really but has someone who's, uh, whose material you're using that night ever seen yes. the show? <gasps> George. Yeah, actually, George Takei, who wrote Star Trek, Mr. Sulu, <laughs> is on a <laughs> classic. He came to the show, and he was, in, in the beginning, nervous, saying, what, what am I about to see? I actually performed it, and I said, listen, George, think of it, the way I approach it is as if it's really a monologue that I'm auditioning for Juilliard. It's a dramatic <laughs> recitation. Or, and his and eyes lit up. He thought, oh, yeah, that's Yeah, and then he thought, wow, really? And then I did it, and he, he really was laughing. He was laughing. He got a bit so bizarre. I mean, so he couldn't bizarre. see him. I could see him. He was laughing so much that I really it brought tears to my eyes, <laughs> honestly, because it was so moving to see him have a good time at hearing his own book. Richard, you have... Um, a really hilarious uh, bit that yeah, I'm, I'm very so much like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they can, how did now, just to, to set it up? How, just as one of the ones they offered you to do. I mean, Vanna speaks yeah, to right you in way. some yeah, way. Um, what did you gave me? Like four. There was Mr. T. There was this. There was something. And I just, I said that th th this one smacks of, of. I think I can handle this. You know, so, th something. But you can read any of them. But this one. And then uh, uh, I, I took my own take on it and 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 then did it. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's really what it was. But I remember, believe it or not, and they don't remember it, but I didn't audition for them, but I had to come and meet them early, or like the day before, and read it like at a diner and say, this is it. <laughs> and then, and the, you know, direction everything, and, uh, you know, any actor will go, blah, 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 they would, <laughs> I said, I know, I, I sort of knew what I was going to do with it. Yeah. And then you just go from there if you do get to do it two or three times. The know. stage is yours. Okay. This is Vanna Speaks by Vanna White. <laughs> I think of my job as that of a cheerleader. Of course, as you know, my main job is turning the letters. <laughs> Merv says that he hired me because I turned the letters better than any of the 200 other women who auditioned. And what's my secret? As I told 60 Minutes, <laughs> it must be in the wrist. <laughs> when we're all in position, the overhead TV monitor in the studio shows the spinning wheel as a pre-recorded crowd chants, Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> now, informal surveys reveal that lots of people tune in to see what I wear. <laughs> now, I used to spin around every time, but now I turn <laughs> only when my dress has an interesting back. <laughs> now, during a round, I concentrate and listen very carefully to what each player says. Even though I do not turn the letters until they are lit up on the board, I know where each one is located. So I am always ready to move and always know just where I'm going. When there's a long puzzle, a phrase such as, lightning never strikes twice in the same place, I have to rush like crazy to turn all the letters once the puzzle's been solved so that Pat can get on to the next part of the game. Sure, it's not the most intellectually challenging job in the world, but few jobs are. But it is hard work. <laughs> Basically, one show is very much like the rest, but in fact, there's enough about each that's different to keep it interesting. We never know what's going to happen next. The puzzles are different, the contestants are different, <laughs> and there's always the wheel. <laughs> you just never know. <laughs> of course, there have been some really interesting incidents. Once, while turning the letters in the middle of a round, my belt broke and nearly fell off. But I just held on to it and kept flipping those panels. Now that Wheel of Fortune has become an enormous success, everybody from columnists to reporters to sociologists have tried to explain it, but nobody really can. It seems to me that the fact that it's just a great, fun family game that everyone can play should be all the explanation that anybody needs. <laughs> Vanna White. <laughs> <laughs> So sincere. It yeah. is. It is. It is. It is. Um, now, explain to me, as an actor, how you work out your attack. 
on Vanna White. Um, attack is a, is, a, is a good word because the, the banality of this is just spectacular. Not that we're making fun of her. But, no. I mean, no. the banality of the people who watch Wheel of Fortune every single I night know. and that the same thing happens. But, and so I said, I try, and, and, and it's, it's a longer piece when I do it, but I try and I, I approach it like a Hitchcock movie. <laughs> and and, and a, a combination of a Hitchcock movie and you know the comedian Lewis Black? Yeah, yeah. yeah of course. He yeah. is angry. His yeah. <laughs> goes. So when I'm telling, and I run around the set. Mm -hmm. It should be, if I were really acting it or trying to, to speak it conversationally, I'd be go, what happens is that the monitor goes on and then I run around and then I turn the thing. But that's, I took a tact on this mm -hmm. and I took it as banal as it was. I tried to make it that intriguing. Yeah. Well, but it's interesting though because it is, uh, not to uh, have too close a textual analysis of uh, Vanna Speaks, but I think mm -hmm. that when Vanna writes that, it comes across in her writing that she does think what she's doing is a really oh, demanding, oh, very absolutely. important If everybody job. captures the intention of their piece, well, you but, know, but what did the on, author mean to say? But the thing is, is did Vanna say, hey, I would like, and I mean, in all fairness to mm -hmm. Vanna, right. did she say, I think, I think the world would like to hear my autobiography. I think they want, I do not think she woke up one day and said, I'm going to write my, I think they came to her, they yeah, say, sure. you have a tremendous amount of fame. If you write an autobiography, I think you'll make a lot of money. And she goes, sure, get me somebody. And then they got her some ghostwriter, and she said, well, this is what I do. He put it into words, and she has a book. Mm -hmm. It's not her fault. <laughs> what this is about. <laughs> that it would eventually work its that way to Richard Pryde. would inspire an off-Broadway hit show. Yeah. 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 Right, exactly. But nonetheless, she has to take responsibility for writing the book that she has, and she's well paid so that she can take these punches. Um, all right, so you guys, now you have your own that you uh, like to do. I mean, uh, you, you do... Um, George Takai. Yes, and, and I do Neil Sedaka, and I've even done the, the Britney Spears diary where she talks day to day about her, her experience filming the movie Crossroads, <laughs> and it's very detailed. It's just a couple of sentences each page. Right. Day one, I woke up. Mm -hmm. Day mm -hmm. two, there was a loud clap of thunder. Right. I, it's that, those details. It's, it's really fun stuff. Now, having done this, I mean, is this a kind of a warning shot when you guys decide to, when a publisher comes to the two of you and says, you know, we'd like the Jackie Hoffman autobiography, would you... Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll never get that big, Michael. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. With his help. <laughs> exactly. Right. With this man's help. And if they come to you and Richard and say, yeah, would you right, like to write right, your right. autobiography? Say, yes, I know it can be done. To we're, we're almost done, but I want to say there is a Jackie oh. Hoffman CD, which... Yeah. There is. Hopefully, very funny, but hopefully not for the same reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we got to wrap it up. It's been it's been fun, but let me ask you one last thing. Can you tell me of any, any celebrity autobiographies that you went through and that you tried and just don't work for some reason? Is there anyone who wrote something out there that you thought could work but it doesn't work, and you know why it doesn't work? Any any time that we do some, well, if it's a comedian that wrote a book and they're trying to, it's tongue in cheek. If they're trying to be funny themselves yeah. in the right. right. Steve yeah. Martin's Steve Martin's book is quite. It's brilliant. brilliant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah it's you gorgeous. Can't do that. Yeah, and if yeah. there's yeah. anything that if if it if there's something about it that's dark, in in, in a, the right, you know, let's say for example, or or something has happened with the person afterwards. Like let's say somebody suggested once, oh, Michael Jackson wrote a book, Moonwalker. And oh yeah, it's not. There's something I can't really? explain it. I think yeah, it's that's shocking that that wouldn't work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it. it's it's really funny because uh, I, I believe I, I I did this theory about uh, actors in politics. I believe that actors as a whole, I love their politics when they're a group. When they're solo, they're really just out there for themselves. It's just, I mean, somebody once said politics is just, you know, Hollywood for ugly people. So, um, <laughs> so, so what these people are doing are st is just about themselves. And, and I'm wondering if politicians might have equally as, as dreadful an mm -hmm. autobiography, but but you actually you've looked at politicians oh, yeah, are, do. and they don't work though. I think you said not some 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 do some don't. We do at, we athlete. I mean, there's so many. I'll different... bet you there's a great Nancy Reagan in there. She's been done. Oh, she's as dreadful to her kids as uh, as Mrs. Trump is. Oh, <laughs> if you choose, if you choose to <laughs> interpret it like that, that. <laughs> we're, we're reading we're we're reading it, and and great performers are doing it. So it's up to you to think. Idiot, you know what? You decide. Yeah, you decide. Yeah, yeah right. celebrity autobiography with the greatest respect towards all. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. You have to do it like that. Uh, you know, it's at the to. Triad Theater here in New York on Monday nights. Monday nights. Come and have a couple of drinks and see 
Great performers like Richard Kind, Jackie Hoffman, and the creators, Eugene Peck and Dale Rafel. And every now and then, Michael Riedel of the New York uh, Times. Yes, it's only on special Woo! nights. That's right. <laughs> I will be reading from The Unimaginable Life, Lessons Learned on the Path of Love by Kenny Loggins. <laughs> Jackie, Richard, Dale, and Eugene, thanks for being our guests tonight on Theater Talk. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.